God is good all the time. Well, today I'm going to give you a few tips about canning lids, both your metal and your tattler lids, and go over a little bit of this and that of what's going on around here. But before I get started, I wanted to say one more thing, and that is about comments. Um, I've had messages from people on my Facebook who've said they've tried to comment on my YouTube videos and were unable to. And I think they were worried that maybe I had blocked them, like they, I, they had offended me or something. And no, that is not going on. I am not blocking anyone. It's just some kind of quirk going on right now with YouTube. And I'm sure eventually it will iron itself out because that seems to be the standard when you're talking about any kind of social media, that anytime they make some changes that are kind of big, it seems to affect a lot of things like how you comment, if you can comment, um, and uh, just give it time. Keep refreshing and keep trying to comment if you're having that issue. I know it's not just my channel. I found out some other channels are having that same issue. So I just want to make sure you know that I'm not blocking you. Just keep trying and your comments are very welcome. Okay, so getting on to the canning lids. Now, I have been canning jams, jellies, and syrups for many years. And I've done it the same way for many years until suddenly one year I started having problems with my jars losing their seal and it was the first time it just this one year all of a sudden most of my jars well maybe not most but a good number of my jars started losing their seals and of course that makes you feel like a failure anyone who's a canner knows this that when you start losing seals like that what did i do wrong right well i stumbled upon a video by um, bev wolfie from our half acre homestead and she talked about this same issue and i was really thrilled to find out that the problem was not with me but it was with the fact that the metal lids, they had been changing the way they made them. Now, apparently, they've changed them yet again this recent year because I saw a video that uh, Linda did from Linda's Pantry on it. And I wouldn't know about that because I haven't bought any new lids in a few years because I stocked up on a bunch of these metal lids a few years ago from our local store when they had a really good sale on them. So I don't know about the most current lids. I just know over the past several years that there has been a change. And I can, um, and I don't remember if Bev showed this in her video or not, if she could do the side-by-side -side comparison, but I can because I was, um, thankfully, uh, last year during garage sale season, I stumbled across two boxes of the Kerr lids like this and these are definitely the older lids and so i can show you a side by side comparison here's the one i've been i was checking and you can see right along this edge can you see these little indentations those are from my fingernails and i will do another one a fresh one to show you turn it towards the light see if you can see that okay now here is a current lid now I know they're different brands but the, it's the same all the way across the board and if I make it try to make an indentation in that it does make one but it's very uh, it's not near as deep so what you can tell by that let me hold these up so that they the marks line up with each other so you can tell by that the deepness of those indentations really says something about how thick this little gummy layer is. So let me go over the canning method I used to use when it came to jams, jellies. This is just applicable to jams, jellies, and syrups. Um, and you may have seen your mothers do this or your grandmothers do this, but you can't do it this way anymore if you're using the newer lids. And that was after filling the hot jar with the hot substance, cleaning off the rim, I, put the lid on, put the band on, hand tight, invert the jar for five to 10 minutes, then stand it right side up and then allow it to seal. And they all used to seal great. You can't do it that way anymore and expect to have a seal that's gonna hold for a few months, a year. So what you have to do is after you do that part with the lid and all that, you then need to process in a hot water bath canner for about 10 minutes then it will seal it will get a good seal that will stay and last for years and it will be shelf stable for years so once i started practicing that method um, i stopped losing seals on my jams jellies and syrups 
So there's a little pointer there and to show you if you've been having issues because you've been trying it the old fashioned way, that is why it's not you, it's the fact that the lids have changed. Now these lids, um, these garage sale lids I found, I only paid 25 cents a box and these are, um, were not opened, never used, so, um, but I'm guessing these are the kind of lids you could probably reuse several times. Now, I don't know that I'll do that or not. I might give it a try with something that maybe I'll use right away just to see. Um, but uh, anyway, I'm holding on to these old lids, these two boxes, 25 cents a box for, you know, when I really need them. These are kind of like gold to me right now. So now let me go over a little bit on the Tatman lids. Now, I did talk about the Tatler lids a bit in, a, in one of my more recent videos. I don't remember if it was the peach video or the apple video, but I'll go over a little more detail on it right here. Now, when you're using the Tatler lids, this can be very confusing to people. That is, and I've got two, two lids here for a reason, is that it's to get a good seal on your Tatler lids, the trick is in two parts. It is in how you put the lid on before you put it in the canner, and then what you do with the jar, the lid, after you get it out of the canner. So to start with, you can put your ingredients in your jar, just like anything else. You wanna make sure your rim is clean before you put your lid on. Now there's two ways you can put the lid on. I always have a tendency to put the ring on and then drop the lid into place. Some people may find it easier to put the ring on the lid like this, hold it on and then put it like that. Um, it's just a matter of preference. That doesn't matter. Here's where it matters. When you go to put the band on, your instructions are going to tell you to put it on hand tight and loosen it up a quarter, you know, about a quarter turn. To me, that's not clear enough because we're all different in what we decide is hand tight. And that could be just because of the way we do things or the strength of our hands and arms. So, Here's how you can do it where it's going to be the same all the way across the board, no matter, no matter if you're a man or a woman or how strong your hands and arms are. And that is, once you've got your band on there like that, keep your other hand off the jar and just start turning that lid. And when it starts, the jar starts to move on its own, that's as tight as you want to go, no tighter than that. So showing that again, I've got my ring and my lid on there. I put the band on. You can hold the jar while you get the band lined up with the threads, but then take your hand off and then just turn until the jar can move freely, until the jar moves on its own. Okay, and one more time, because this is really important. Just like that, the jar started to move, it's done. I don't put it on any tighter. Then at that point, I'm gonna put the jar into my canning, into my canner, hot water bath pressure canning doesn't matter let it do its process for whatever length of time it needs to then when you take it out of the canner this is the other important step as soon as you take it out for me as soon as I take it out I tighten that band down hand tight and then I let it seal and then once it's all cooled down I take the bands off so obviously you're going to want to handle your jar with something when you pull it out of the out of there with some rags or what I reckon are these oven gloves. I really like these because I was able to get a set of two on Amazon and these are really nice. They're still monstrous on my hands. They only come in the one size, but these are really good for handling stuff like this. I still find them a little too bulky for me, but then you can just tighten it like that. So I'll put a link to these below. I will also be linking to both sizes of the canning, the Tatler lids. Now I love the Tatler lids, especially since I figured out this trick. Now I want to say something else about when it comes out of the canner. On a video I did last year about the Tatler lids, I had a lady that came in and said something about letting the jars uh, vent for a bit. And I can't remember how long she said, um, for me to do that, I'm most likely to for, to walk away and forget to go back and tighten them down. That is why I tighten them down as soon as they come out. But if there's any experienced Tatler lid people out there that are fought, that are watching me right now, and you do the vent, you let it vent for a minute or so, please comment below uh, exactly how long you let it vent and what your method is to keep from forgetting to go back and tighten those lids right away. Um, 
for me, it's just best that, you know, if I take all the jars out, then one by one, tighten them down. Um, that way they get a few seconds to vent if I start from the first one that I pulled out of the out of the canner because I'll set them out in a certain order then start from that and go tighten each one down one by one because again I, I know me I will walk away and forget and then I won't tighten them down and then I won't have a seal on any of my jars so there's the little pointers on the tattler lids on how best to use them so again you put it on turn it till it till it uh, till the jar starts to turn when it's done canning pull it out tighten it down the rest of the way, and then let, let it finish its sealing process. So since I started doing that, I stopped having problems. Now, I know the, I remember the other thing I was going to say. There's a couple issues if you don't follow this, besides it just possibly losing a seal or not getting a seal at all, and that is if you have the lid on too tight, it's not going to properly vent while it's in the canner. And what you'll end up with, and I'll show you these side by side, what you could end up with is lids. This one isn't so bad, but comparing the difference, can you see that this one here is a, is a little bit convex in comparison to this one? Now, when you first pull your jars out of the canner, they will look like this anyway. They'll be domed up a little bit. That's normal. And then they will suck in and become uh, concave rather than convex. But if it's really domed up when you pull it out that means you have the lid on too tight and then it will stay that way permanently like this one and then one of my wide mouth ones did and i'm not sure because i haven't tried them again the ones that ended up convex like this for canning but i'd be concerned that they might be permanently disformed and not properly can so i only use these ones for fermenting stuff then the other thing that can happen if if you put it on too loose, then you're going to end up with your lids blowing off in the middle of the canning process, which has also happened to me. Now, I didn't crack my jars or anything, but that would be also be something I'd be concerned about. If your lids are on too tight, it could possibly crack your jar. So just following those methods, those two things before and after should give you a good seal without any issues. All right, so moving on to a few other things I have going on. So I've got a jar right here, my first jar started, of garlic fermenting, and it's already good and bubbly, and you can see it's starting to get a little bit cloudy. And I think I'll be putting this video up after this one, so be watching for that to come out very soon um, on how I did this. It's a very simple process. And then I wanna show you what I've got. This is, I have tons of garlic I still have to dig up and dry. But this was the stuff I broke up, the garlic, the, you know, still in the clothes with the skins on. And I need to let them dry real good so they'll be easier to peel. And what I'm using here is this great little mesh bag. And I'm going to be hanging this up somewhere that um, I used to get um, with my Sancha ballet slippers and point shoes. Um, they always came with a free one of these bags. So I'd end up with tons of these bags because I'd have to get lots of shoes through the years. And there, it just makes a really good bag for drying stuff in. So I'm just going to hang this somewhere so my garlic cloves can get nice and dry to finish peeling those. And then, of course, i got to dig up the rest and get going on that. I also, my, my infused oils, if you remember my video that I did on the infused oils, are about ready to strain. And I'm going to be doing the update video on these real soon. So be watching for that to come out. Now, this right here, this is... Um, and I'm surprised at how nice and clear it looks. Um, this is my cedar vinegar that I finally got done. My cedar and my peppermint vinegars took longer for whatever reason to finish out because they stayed bubbly for a while. This one finished first. I still have my peppermint one over here that is still bubbly, but I'm thinking in a few more days it should be done. But anyway, I took this yesterday, strained it out, and then I used this to shampoo my carpet and it worked really good and it has a real nice smell and believe it or not, it even tastes really good too. I was surprised. So I don't know that I would ever necessarily use it in an extract, but then again, I might because I liked the flavor and the peppermint tastes amazing. The um, peppermint flavor in it is super strong. That surprised me because I've made a mint one before, but I don't remember it turning out that strong. So maybe it's because it, this was late year peppermint and so it had a stronger flavor to it. Of course, I've got some more um, grains soaking because I, I got to get some more grains dried up and ready to grind. 
I got a big old pile of tomatillos over here to make some more salsa verde and that's another video I have coming out. I've actually already uh, made a video of the um, of me making the salsa verde and uh, but I still have another batch to go. I think this is the last batch I'm going to do because I have a crud load of, uh, uh, of salsa that and that some of it I'm going to end up giving it away because I have so much. One more thing I wanted to talk about was the fermented apples. I know some people have already jumped into starting to ferment their apples and I wanted to tell you what my thoughts were on the final product. I was not happy with the way the apples tasted or their texture when they were completely done fermenting. Um, they seemed to totally lose their flavor and get a little, uh, I don't know, they, they got, they, they, they didn't get very soft. They almost seemed to get kind of leathery, which I thought was odd. Now maybe it's the type of apples I have because they are naturally a, a very tart apple. Um, I don't actually know the breed of apples those are out front because that tree was here when we got here, but I'm thinking it's a Gravenstein. But they are naturally a tart apple like a Granny Smith is. They're great apples because they're great for pies and all that kind of stuff, and they last for a very, very, very long time once you pick them. They have a very long shelf life just as is. However, I'm thinking that could have something to do with the texture. Now, I don't know about the flavor. So if you give it a try, maybe try a couple of different types of apples. Maybe a, a sweeter apple may work better for this than the tart apple. Um, but what I did find and I was very pleased with was the liquid in the jar was so good that it made a refreshing tasty drink just as it was. So I ended up, that's how I ended up consuming it. So I'm gonna insert a picture right here And that is the fermented cinnamon apple drink that I made. And I didn't add anything to it. I just strained the apples out. And then I gave the apples, because I didn't enjoy the way they tasted or the texture, I gave the apples to the chickens and they loved it. So if you gave the fermented apples a try, let me know in comments below what types of apples you tried. Tart or sweet. You can give me the types, you know, whether it be a Johnny Gold or a Red Delicious too if you want. But specifically tart or sweet ones and then let me know how yours turned out and what you thought about them and maybe I'll try this again with some good organic store-bought sweet apples just to see how it turns out but either way I know I can make a, a really tasty drink doing the fermented apples maybe trying it with a little bit less maybe crushing them up or what I'm hoping is to ask Mr. Rain to make me a cider press and then start making my own cider and then using my fermentation starter to get it going and get just a good yummy probiotic drink out of that. So anyway, I hope that um, you enjoyed this video and that you learned something new. Thanks for watching. Take care and God bless.